Hello, my dear fellow galactic travelers. The fabric of our existence is going to permanently change now. I am speaking, of course, of the most important celestial event in this year of 2024. Since 2008, Pluto, aka the Lord of the Underworld, has inhabited the sign of Capricorn and is ready to move into the sign of Aquarius. Pluto is a dwarf planet located in the Kuiper belt of our solar system, and it takes 248 years to orbit the Sun. Pluto was discovered in 1930 when it was at 18 degrees Cancer. This also means that no person alive today has ever experienced Pluto in the zodiac sign of Aquarius. The moment of the discovery is important because in mundane astrology we assume that new celestial bodies are discovered when humanity has crossed a certain threshold of consciousness. Pluto has mainly to do with ideas, with images, entanglements and taboos. Pluto on a metaphysical level directs us to our soul's divine will and the source of our soul's transformational power and our innate quest to experience ourselves as an individual fragment of source. For the collective of humanity, the discovery of Pluto may have to do primarily with the exploration of the unconscious. And because it is such a slow moving planet, it represents long and thorough processes of irreversible and fundamental transformation. Pluto has a very meticulous process in doing so, including destruction, death and revelation that lead to regeneration and rebirth. A delightful process to be sure. After a year and a half of moving back and forth between Capricorn and Aquarius, Pluto makes its final entrance into Aquarius on Tuesday, November 19th, 2024. Pluto is in Capricorn for the last time ever for us. After that, it stays in Aquarius for 20 years, marking a new era for humanity and beyond. We will never experience Pluto in Capricorn again, unless we somehow live another 230 years when Pluto next returns to Capricorn in 2255. So this is a truly unique moment. This is the last time we'll experience Pluto in Capricorn's energy. Pluto's transition from Capricorn to Aquarius is a moment of retrospection and introspection. We gain a deeper understanding of a transit and its lessons, and we may have a revelation about what all of this was about. Pluto's mission in Capricorn is complete now, and it is reborn in the next sign, bringing new lessons and challenges for us. The transit of Pluto in Capricorn has been about learning the lessons of growing up and becoming adults, taking responsibility, developing maturity and establishing control over our lives. We have collectively learned some difficult but necessary lessons about responsibility, authority and how to navigate power structures. Over the past 15 years, corruption has been unveiled at every level of global government and economy. We've witnessed corporate greed and ruthlessness to the level of endangering the planet and the health of all beings. Remember the final crash in 2008, right after Pluto moved into Capricorn? Capricorn is a sign that is highly aware of how society is organized. If you have a wobbly foundation, if you don't have substance to support society, you will experience the projection of power and control. 
Both are shadow sides of Capricorn, and Pluto has put a spotlight on that. The last three years of Pluto's journey through Capricorn have been especially significant for the story of the USA. Quite similar to solar returns, our birthdays, USA has experienced its Pluto return and the old cycle completes now and a new one begins as well. In the case of Pluto and the United States, we witness the finishing of a chapter of 248 years of lessons of holding and expressing power and control. On the U.S. birthday on 4th of July, where the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776, the fixed star system conjuncting USA's Pluto was Aquila, the eagle. And isn't it interesting that the eagle is the heraldic symbol of the USA? Aquila, in its positive aspect, inspires clarity. Aquila will support natural-born leaders. Its energy is action-oriented. It will make you brave and courageous and instills an insatiable thirst for knowledge in you. It can also lead to a dominating character with a strong will to gain influence over others. And in a mundane astrology, Aquila symbolizes space exploration, bombs, missiles, and drones. And all of these aspects of Aquila, the eagle, can be attributed to the USA for sure. Pluto achieves its transformational goals through a three-stage process. The lesson of power and powerlessness, the lesson of awareness, and the lesson of transformation. It's through an initial experience of disempowerment that we discover our inner strength and power. During Pluto in Capricorn's transit, we've seen various forms of disempowerment, such as the overreach of institutional control, whether from family, state, corporations, or other hierarchical systems. During its time in Capricorn, all structures of hierarchy, authority, status, and prestige have been inspected by Pluto's relentless and thorough energy. Pluto loves to uncover decay, corruption, stagnation, and infection for our highest divine good. It exposes the darkest sides of all it touches and shines light into the shadows of our individual and collective psyche. There is quite a healing journey with Pluto. It purifies and clears the way for new and healthy growth. Over the next several years, therefore, we will begin to see glimmers of new possibilities opening up. Pluto's gradual transition into Aquarius began in 2023. And the sign change took place in three steps. I invite you to go back in your memory and just have a look what changed in your life during the first steps of Pluto in Aquarius. In 2023, Pluto first changed to Aquarius for about three months, end of March until mid-June 2023. And then returned to Capricorn for a little more than seven months. In 2024, it remained in Aquarius for more than seven months, beginning end of January until 1st of September, before it returned to Capricorn for two and a half months now. And from next Tuesday on, it will finally and permanently change to Aquarius until 2044. Each time Pluto moved into Aquarius, we got small previews of the topics that Pluto will address when it finally starts its three-stage process again. Disempowerment, awareness, and transformation. In Aquarius, Pluto will begin to pick at the dark side of information technologies, science, social networking, 
and progressivism as a whole. When Pluto entered Aquarius in March 2023, we saw the first major public debut of generative AI with the release of ChatGPT. And by the way, when Pluto moved into Capricorn in 2008, we were presented with a life-changing invention for humanity, the iPhone. It's quite clear that Pluto in Aquarius will revolutionize technology even more, especially AI and the ways we interact with information. It will lead us to ask hard questions about the drawbacks of infinite progress and living up to social ideas versus individual imperfect human need. And we might see the digital age being replaced by the quantum age. Astrologically, Aquarius also has to do with the subject of change. If Capricorn was about fixed structures, laws and rules, Aquarius is about breaking rules, about balancing differences, justice and freedom. As I said, Pluto's entry into Aquarius will bring us new ideas, new themes and new focuses in the three phases I mentioned before. We will become more aware of inequality and injustice. Our focus will be on independence and freedom, emancipation, renewal, decentralization, and networking. We will question many previous values, including forms of government, hierarchies and companies, bureaucratic processes, international treaties, but also the structure of the world itself. Maybe we finally understand that walls do not work, that exchange, communication and solidarity are the better solutions to realize that we can achieve more with joint efforts. In the very best case, humanity itself transforms into a cooperative community. And we know that regaining our power, awareness, transformation and development can only happen if we look honestly and without blinkers at what is happening right now. Aligned with Pluto during its transition from Capricorn to Aquarius is not only the constellation of Aquila, but also our beautiful star family from the constellation of Lyra. They are said to be the root race of all humanoid races in our galaxy. After the terrible and devastating Lyran Wars, where our ancestors first experienced the destructive dark energies in our galaxy, they had to give up their home constellation and fled or incarnated in neighboring star systems like the Pleiades, Sirius, Arcturus, and Andromeda, just to name a few common ones. It was the largest mass exodus in the history of our universe. The Lyrans are said to have contributed the element of fire to humanity, and they brought knowledge and spiritual wisdom to Lemuria and Atlantis, predominantly regarding the use of physical energy. We didn't excel at handling this energy ultimately, as we know, and the fall of Atlantis is a testimony to that. So I believe the alignment with Pluto at the transit from Capricorn to Aquarius, our galactic ancestors from Lyra are active to help us humanity evolve to, towards spiritual ascension. The Lyrans are very committed to our human progression, especially in relation to intelligence, awareness, and spirituality. And by the way, Lyran starseeds among us are known for their wisdom, intuition, and psychic abilities. Most of them are energy healers and have strong psychic abilities, and they are called to help us with this transition as well. And now I invite you to a reflection and meditation. Pluto wants you to uncover your unconscious, 
to take responsibility and action. And I ask you, are you determined to take this power? Or do you leave to others the power you could take, but don't, out of convenience? To whom do you give your power? It is important to be aware now where your attention goes, in which energy fields your thoughts are active, that you are responsible, where you direct your emotions. Do you create good with your thoughts? Are you at peace? Do you live constructively for the good of the whole? Now is the beginning of a new era, which will be completely different from everything we as humanity, as a collective, have known so far. And we are now able to determine how this plays out, New Earth. What do you do to step into your mission for New Earth fully? What do you do to follow your soul's authority? It is time to take your life mission in your hands. No one else is handing it to you. This needs determination, focus and commitment to your soul path. And it needs only two sentences. And I ask you to repeat them after me. But only if you really want this. It will be glorious, furious, and it will take you places you will not have imagined in your wildest dreams. And if you are not ready now, this is fine. You can write the sentences down and wait for the right moment for you. Close your beautiful eyes and take three deep breaths in and out. Breathe in love and light of the divine. Breathe out everything that holds you back. Breathe in love and light of the divine. Breathe out everything that doesn't serve your highest divine good any longer. Breathe in love and light of the divine. Breathe out the old life. It has fulfilled its purpose. It's time to breathe in the new life that is here for you now. And with every breath in, new life is flowing into you. And with every breath out, the old life is flowing out, leaving you because it is no longer necessary. And now imagine you are standing in a pillar of light and you can stand up if you like. You are standing in a pillar of divine light of creation. How does that feel? Golden, silver, platinum particles dancing in this ray of light, dancing around you. And now I want you to repeat after me three times. I am standing in my soul stream. Divine force of creation is flowing through my soul stream. I am standing in my soul stream. Divine force of creation is flowing through my soul stream. I am standing in my soul stream. Divine force of creation is flowing through my soul stream. Feel that. I am stepping now into my universal service of divine creation fully. I am stepping now into my universal service of divine creation fully. I am stepping now into my universal service of divine creation fully. And you take a deep breath in and out. 
the force of life moves through you. You are standing in your soul stream. Divine creation is flowing around you and through you. And you have stepped into a universal service of divine creation fully. You have said yes to your soul purpose and your life mission fully. Feel that. Be that. Embody that. For some of you, this will happen instantly. For some of you, you will experience your time and space a bit differently. This is why you came here. For some of you, it will feel like the world is turned upside down. For some of you, it will feel organically like a small path upwards through a beautiful landscape. And some of you are standing at the shore and you are ready to dive into unknown waters. And for some of you, it will feel like a parachute jump out of a plane and it will be glorious. For all of you, it will be a beautiful experience to step into your universal service of divine creation. And now it is time for that. And I invite you to come back from this meditation now, slowly and in your own pace. Become aware of your breath. Take deeper and conscious breaths now. Start moving your body gently and carefully. And when you are back, smile. You have stepped into a universal service of divine creation. The age of Aquarius can come now. You are ready.